we will study in this lecture in detail about a prototype drug, aspirin. Let's start with kinetics or pharmacokinetics of aspirin. Aspirin is well absorbed from stomach and more from upper into small intestine. It is distributed all over body about 50 to 80 percent of it is bound to plasma protein or albumin. It is metabolized to acetic acid and salicylates. Salicylate is conjugated with glucuronic acid and glycine and is excreted by kidney. Now, low dose of aspirin, such as 0.6 gram, is eliminated by first order kinetics, while high doses that is more than more than four grams per day they are eliminated by second order kinetics so while the half life of for low dose of aspirin is low about 3 to 5 hours high dose aspirin may have very high t t half or half life that is, it may be up to 15 hours. Aspirin irreversibly inhibits cyclooxygenase enzyme, so blocks the synthesis of prostaglandins and thromboxin A2, and therefore helps in resolution of inflammation. Now, its anti-inflammatory actions they occur by inhibition of prostaglandin it blocks the actions of kinin inhibits granulocytes adherence to the damaged vasculature it stabilizes lysozyme It inhibits migration of leukocytes. So these are the places in the cellular and vascular events where aspirin acts and stops inflammation. Additionally, it also causes analgesia. and may as also used as antipyretic an important action is inhibition of platelet aggregation So, its uses most important is antiplatelet action, analgesic, antipyretic, anti inflammatory. Additionally, it may also be used in Alzheimer's, familial polyposis, and niacin induced flush. So, these are the uses uh, of aspirin. Coming over to the adverse effects. of aspirin. In CNS, it causes headache, tinnitus, dizziness, blurred vision, irritability. In CVS, it may cause fluid retention, edema, and CHF. In GIT, an important side effect or adverse event is peptic ulceration. It may also cause abdominal pain, nausea, and vomiting some hypersensitivity reactions are also seen with aspirin especially bronchial asthma and geodema and rashes for blood 
thrombocytopenia, hypoprothrombinemia, and bleeding tendencies are seen. Then there are some renal adverse effects. It, inhibition of PGE2-mediated vasodilatation in response to AT2 causes renal insufficiency. It may cause renal failure and hyperkalemia. Additionally, analgesic neuropathy may occur on, sorry, nephropathy may occur on chronic use. Hepatic. Sometimes it causes liver function abnormalities and rarely liver failures. Now, an important syndrome which is connected with the adverse effects of aspirin is RISE syndrome, which may be triggered by aspirin in its derivative. It includes hepatoencephalopathy and is highly lethal. Therefore, it is asked not to give children with chickenpox or influenza B infection aspirin, which can precipitate RISE syndrome. Now, coming over to the contraindications. Peptic ulcers, esophageal varices, bronchial asthma, allergy, viral infections in children, Bleeding tendency, these are the contraindications for use of aspirin. Additionally, it should be used in small dose in gout as it competes with uric acid excretion. Now drug interactions. It displaces oral anticoagulants. and hypoglycemics. So, increasing their activities and it may lead to toxicity of these two drugs and therefore should not be given together with oral anticoagulants and hypoglycemics. It inhibits uricuric effects of sulfonylpyrazone and probenecid. It increases analgesic effects of barbiturates. So these are some important interactions, drug interactions for aspirin. So that is about the introduction and classification of NSAIDs and an explanation on a prototype aspirin. In next lecture, we will talk about other NSAIDs and talk in detail about paracetamol and its actions. If you like this lecture or it was helpful to you, please like, subscribe and share our channel and a YouTube video. I hope this lecture was useful for you. Till the next lecture, thank you and bye-bye.